Yeah, so I mean, Augusta National and the Masters is just way different. For us, broadcasters, I mean, that's a great opportunity to go out and do some speaking engagements. It is a very busy week, but one of the most fun of the year for sure. I'm a Texas guy, always been a huge Ben Crenshaw fan, so it's going to be really cool for me to sit down. I've never interviewed him before, so I'm look, really looking forward to it. I'm going to ask you, Augusta National gives you a call and says, Ben, if you could make one change to the golf course at Augusta National, what would it be? Did y'all see VJ Singh's comment? I did he not. Said, he said, I think we need to add 10 or 11 yards to number 12 the shortest hole on the course. I thought that one came out of the blue, but it's kind of an interesting comment. Yeah. If the wind blows just a little bit, you start putting a little doubt in your mind, and you never know that you're quite safe, and you're only safe when it hits the green up there. We have both seen so many good shots turn out horrible, and then you got to step up and hit it. Uh, I've seen shots that look good and they drop in the creek and then you get up and somebody hits it and then it goes over the green you go, God, now what? I mean, yeah, for 155 uh, yards. But it's crazy little hole. Absolutely incredible. Um, to Cabot, special thanks to y'all for having us out. Enjoy the food, the drinks, there's cigars over there and do a little rain dance so we don't get any rain in the morning and hopefully this thing gets started on time tomorrow. But thank y'all so much. Hope everybody enjoys the Masters this year. Thanks. Thank Wonderful. Above Zoe's crib. <laughs> We're celebrating greatness in this household. And we got it right here. It's this guy. GWA award winner. He yes. shouted me out during his speech tonight, so it actually makes me feel like yeah. I kind of won the award too, yeah, even I, though I didn't. I, um, was, I didn't give a shout You out. guys are just saying that because I'm the one pouring the Sincoro, right? <laughs> Cheers, by the way. Cheers. I think the biggest, uh, the most obvious question mark for me is the one guy who doesn't do well if rounds are broken up over Who's multiple that? days in weird ways. Tiger Woods supposed to tee off at 124. If that gets so that he's teeing off at 4 p.m., say, and then he doesn't finish his round, he has to come back first thing the next day, that doesn't seem ideal. But other than that, it's a little hard to know how it's going to affect anyone, right? Uh, but Xander's going to win. Who finishes second? Didn't know we were agreeing on Xander, but uh, I think Bryson's going to win. The Scotty the situation. potential birth Bob of his first the, child. The perspective of fatherhood hitting uh, the second that you make the turn for Augusta on the weekend is just a, just a very dangerous place to be. I would like to ask like the Vegas odd makers if they had to factor in a Scotty potential bailout into the number at all. You think that they're researching for like the actual due date, digging around? Probably, it's good information to have. My pick for this week, by the way, is Wyndham Clark. Are you rooting for a rain delay or just let's get this thing going? You're the one who was celebrating earlier. I want to sleep. I'll say it. I want to sleep. I just, I don't want starts and stops. So if that means let's start at 10 a.m. and let's do it. But boys, end of the night cap and then yeah. sleep well it's a push you to bed masters see you tomorrow it's masters thursday uh well all right we got a 10 30 a.m start got pushed back a few hours thanks to some rain honestly this is a best case scenario right best case scenario not for tiger woods not for tiger woods also they could have played 100%. Should we say that? Should we get ahead of that? They could have played. What was the talk? 35, 40 mile per hour winds? I haven't seen it. Wait, so what time is the um, honorary starter? 10 10 a.m. James oh. Colgan. James Colgan's been flat out making moves on these roads. Yeah, Jim, I'm know. proud of you. I, my New Yorker is kicking in. I just do not take BS on roads anywhere. Your coastal elitism is, is kicking in. No, it's just I grew up in, in a place where the people are the most aggressive drivers in the entire world. So it's a true sink or swim environment. Um, and, you know, I, I'm like Michael Phelps now, you know. What do you got, Dylan? Uh, my guy, Keegan Bradley, going with fresh Jordans this week. 
He's got a couple gnomes also. Would like to know how he got them. How he got those so guys. But you'll also notice Seen and Heard sponsor. Oh, Seen and Heard sponsor, Sincoro, repping on his shoes. I feel like. How do you think Jordan feels about that? He must be into it because Sincoro is Jordan's brand. Ah, there yeah. you go. Makes shout sense. out to MJ. Shout out to Keegan. Face ever do it. Shout out to also the idea of uh, getting a little sponsor love on your shoes because you don't see that a ton. <laughs> We got a green jacket out in the wild oh. here. He's just standing on the corner of the street. Should we give him a ride? The goal that I had today was I wanted to be here for the opening tee shots. And the ceremonial tee shots. The ceremonial tee shots. And not necessarily to stand on the tee box, which I've done before, but I wanted to know what happened to the golf balls themselves. So Gary Player hits first. I want to say he hits maybe about like 30 yards, 40 yards up the upslope. And uh, the next one is Jack. He was about 20 yards short of that. And then Tom was second. And he was about 15 yards ahead of Gary's. You hear applause from the, from the tee box. The people start to scatter and the balls are just sitting there. And I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. So I see there's, looks like someone's in charge on the right side. He starts walking out, uh, two other 20 somethings come out. So they are each assigned to a specific ball. They get it, make sure it's the right one. They give it to whoever their main, that main boss was. So he comes out, they all go to the right side. So I go up to the main boss and I go, where do those golf balls go from here? Like where, you know, what, what's the procedure? What, what happens to them? And he looks at me, that's top secret. <laughs> it, it's, you're not carrying like the nuclear codes here. I mean, it's like, what, what are we doing? So after those tee shots, uh, the three, uh, Gary Player, Jack Nicklaus, Tom Watson, they do uh, a press conference as the, the, the Masters start. So it goes about 25 minutes. I'm one of the, I'm the third to last question. Get my question answered and I say, I say uh, just real quick, do you guys have any idea what happens to the, to the balls that you hit on, on the tee shots. And there's, there's a pause, Jack says, we sign them and they're displayed. I've asked a, a master's official to, to possibly tell me where they go, but, so then Jack at the very end says, after he says that he, he, he signs them, uh, they're signed, he said, but don't worry, I didn't dent it. I mean, really feels like three guys on different paths right now. Xander, my pre-tournament pick, great call. Uh, made a couple early bogeys, missed a couple early putts, has kind of just continued on that. Just off. He's a couple over par right now. Rory has had plenty of good and bad. I think he's one under right now. Scotty is just being Scotty, just hold out from the bunker, which not like he needed any help, but yeah, now he is Three under, so good, medium, not good. I was just saying, it feels like we have this thing happening. When you watch Rory play, there's a real sense that he is thinking about every shot that he's taking, that he's thinking really, really deeply about all of the outcomes that are possible before he makes contact with the ball. And watching him play in the same group as Scotty, it was really juxtaposed how much Scotty plays this like really reactionary athletic style of golf. It doesn't really seem like there's a lot of thought behind the shot. It's just commit, hit it, and usually it goes exactly where it wants it to. Um, and I think that that is kind of like the perfect metaphor for how those two golfers have been on sort of divergent paths in this tournament because you need to be able to commit and you need to be able to kind of get over your mistakes and your misses pretty quickly. Scotty pulling out from the bunker on 12 is a pretty good example of that. Worried that Jason Day's pants, which I do think are cool, <laughs> but I think they could they could be performance inhibitor because it's windy out there and he like he could get blown away. I mean, we saw Sean, Bryson was two under. Sean was going to go follow him. I think he birdied like five of the next seven holes or something. Yeah, so 15, 16, and 17. Those are the holes you're not supposed to make. Well, 15, yeah, but... but those 17. Are, those are a nice birdie. Yeah. Uh, incredible driving, incredible putting, which is how he won at winged foot, right? Drive it further than anybody, hit it straight, and make a lot of putts. Uh, I, it wasn't exactly hitting it tight. 
right? Just made a ton of putts. Yeah, made a made a bunch of twelve footers, ten footers, fifteen footers, which is not sustainable. <laughs> Bryson is out in front of everyone, but um, yeah, but I guess it is, doesn't have to be sustainable to shoot seven under, right? Exactly. Round one, like that was impressive. He called it the best round he shot in a very long time, and it was pretty clinical. And like the few moments where he got into trouble, he got out of trouble. We're always trying to win. <laughs> like we're not just going there to hit it around and have a hit and giggle. I mean, I'm trying to win every single golf tournament. So I love this golf course, love uh, the patrons, love the members, love the golf course conditions, everything about it. It's something I've dreamed of, of always winning my entire life. Yeah, we got 54 holes, you know, in, in live golf, that's they only play 54. So uh, I like my chances. We got a lot of lot of golf left. And uh, yeah, I mean, as you can see, someone shot seven under, I, I could do that tomorrow. First Thursday is in the books. I was just hanging out with Tiger Woods in Amen Corner, which is maybe one of the coolest golf experiences I've ever had in my life. Play has ended and uh, the first round is not complete. We still have to finish uh, round one tomorrow morning, but Tiger's playing well. He's one under so far and generally seems to be swinging it pretty well. I know, Claire, you were pretty close by, uh, but you were, had your eyes on Tiger's playing partner. Right? Yes, Max Homa. I couldn't help but think about how he's kind of had the best draw with uh, groupings the last couple years. He got to play the Open at St. Andrews with Tiger Woods, and then now he's playing at Augusta National, which is like the two best courses to ever play golf at. To get to do them with Tiger Woods is just incredible. So I'm really happy for him and I know he's gonna have just like an awesome week with him. I hope he's gotten some pretty cool photos from the experience because I feel like those would sit just above your fireplace if you could uh, if you could rip them. But anyway, that's it for us here on Masters Thursday. Uh, lots more coming throughout the week. Yes, keep watching because we've got some good stuff coming your way.